So in this evidence this video, I'm going to share a lot of different tables, statistics, some graphs um, that really illustrate how unique the Latter-day Saints are in very positive ways. So even if you don't like statistics, I hope you'll really enjoy this. There will be a lot of numbers you'll see throughout this, but uh, uh, here now. Also, uh, it's over the last several decades, some of this data, and I really wanted to point something out at the start, is uh, so a lot of these things, if you were to say, well, maybe these numbers have dropped, well, they will have dropped across the board. But the Latter-day Saints, the differential, uh, there, the comparison, I think would be bigger. And, and, I, and I use this graph I'm going to start with to, to illustrate that point. This is, uh, I actually use this in the video I just put out here um, on the Answering Critics video talking about um, the New Testament. And if you look here, this is from the Pew Research Study. This just came out. The last 10 years, uh, the percentage of Christians in the United States have, has dropped from 77% to 65%. So you can look there. Um, on the left-hand side, Protestants, about a 16% drop. Catholics, about a 17% drop. Latter-day Saints, no drop. Uh, in fact, growth, uh, growing along with the population, but no, no drop at all uh, there. So... Um, I don't say that lightly, that the data, probably the differentials would, would uh, the gaps would, would be even bigger. Uh, even though all the numbers would be lower, um, the gaps would be bigger. Hope that makes sense as we go along here. Okay, let's start out. One of my favorite ones, I love studying the gospel, so this, this was a fascinating one. So if you look at this slide right here, um, you'll, uh, there's questions about Christianity, including a battery of questions about the Bible. Latter-day Saints were on top, 7.9 out of 12 on average. White evangelical Protestants. Uh, since uh, we're second uh, on this, um, which I'm sure they, that was probably quite upsetting uh, as they uh, tend to attack Latter-day Saints over Christianity in the Bible. So, But think about the uh, youth uh, getting up uh, for seminary early. Uh, if you're not in the headquarters of the church where you have release time seminary, you're, you're getting up at 5, 5.30 in the morning every day to go and, and study the gospel for an hour. Think about all the studying we do um, in the church. That's, that was just a great one to, to show that. Okay, let's look at life goals. Take a look at this. Again, Pew study here. Life goals, uh, Latter-day Saints and the general public now they're using. You'll see Mormons throughout. Uh, you know, from especially back in these time periods, the the use of that term. Um, so look at the top. Being a good parent, eighty-one percent. It's the most important in life. I want you to compare the top to the bottom. So general public. So uh, being a good parent, eighty-one uh, percent. It's extremely important. One of the most important things in life. Uh, and then um, for the general public, that's at fifty percent. Having a successful marriage, seventy-three versus 34%, living a very religious life, 55% versus 20%. So those top three are quite interesting. Um, let's go on to this next one here. How involved are uh, Christians in their congregations? So if you ever feel like you're really involved in your ward, this is a great way to, to show us statistically you uh, rank as the top uh, on this study from Pew in 2014, Religious Landscape Study, uh, evaluating membership and congregation, um, frequency of attendance and uh, uh, worship services, and then frequency in small uh, group religious activities. So we were at the top there on the high uh, category. Also look at what it says on um, there, the likely, most likely to, or one of the tops in believing the Bible is the word of God, pray daily, say religion is very important in their lives, and read scriptures regularly. It's kind of a fun study. Okay, uh, now this is something from a huge study that was done by Gallup. Uh, 676,000 interviews to establish this index. They call it the Well-Being Index. Um, there and what was interesting is uh, the very religious uh, really showed well across across the board here versus the non-religious. So that was really part of what they were trying to illustrate um, here in the reports that came out about this study. So here, here if you look at them here. The Latter-day Saints for the very religious, uh, uh, right up towards the top with the Jewish, definitely the top on the uh, for the Christians. Our composite score, it's not listed here, but we actually tied uh, with the Jews for the top composite score of 69.4. Um, look at the non-religious. It is interesting uh, there that the Latter-day Saints have the lowest of the, so if you are uh, a Latter-day Saint, but you're not practicing, um, you have the lowest well-being. <laughs> so um, critics would say that's because of the shaming culture, maybe. Um, believers might say it's a pricking of the Holy Ghost uh, that may be happening. So anyway, interesting. Um, 
And then look at the bottom. I thought it was interesting to point out also that uh, no religion or atheist or agnostics, um, low well-being scores r relative to uh, religious as well. So some of some fun, interesting stats there. Okay. Now, um, how about um, happiest states? Okay, now I know Utah is not all Latter-day Saints. It's about 62, 63% today. Uh, Idaho is number two at about 26%. But if you were to look at this, so this was a Gallup happiness poll that they did back in 2009. Um, this was a piece that ran in the Desert News after that. Move over Disneyland, your claim as the happiest place on earth is being challenged by a new Gallup happiness poll that ranks Utah as number one for well-being among the 50 states. Look at number two is Hawaii. It's hard to believe we beat Hawaii uh, there. But uh, anyway, that's, I thought that was kind of a fun one there. Okay, um, now uh, the, the Heritage Foundation did this huge study back in the mid-90s. Um, there, It's a great report. It's a 29-page report. Uh, it's called Why Religion Matters, the Impact of Religious Practice on Social Stability. So if you look at the slide here, these are the things they found. They've got lots of studies behind um, these things, but it's just a nice composite of all this evidence they found. So first, what things are higher, then the second slide will be what's lower. So higher levels of marital happiness and stability, stronger parent-child relationships, greater education, higher levels of good work habits, greater longevity and physical health, higher levels of well-being and happiness, higher recovery rates from addiction uh, to alcohol and drugs. Uh, higher levels of self-control, self-esteem and coping skills, higher rates of charitable donations and volunteering, and higher levels of community cohesion and social support for those in need. Okay, now on the lower side, uh, lower divorce rates, lower cohabitation rate, lower rates of out-of-wedlock births, lower levels of teen sexual activity, uh, less abuse of alcohol and drugs, lower rates of suicide, depression, and suicide uh, ideation, lower levels of many infectious diseases, juvenile crime, violent crime, and domestic violence. I love this conclusion here. No other dimension of life in America, with the exception of stable marriages and families, which in turn are strongly tied to religious practice, does more to promote the well-being and soundness of the nation's civil society than citizens' religious observance. As George Washington asserted, the success of the Republic depends on the practice of religion by its citizens. These findings from 21st century social science support his observation. <laughs> okay, so that was sort of thing. Okay, what do we have next here? Oh, this is a, this is a great uh, piece. This was in um, religionnews.com. They did a piece um, that was highlighting a master's thesis that was done at the University of Pennsylvania by uh, 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 Alicia Hunter um, in Applied Psychology. And here was her thesis. Why do Mormons score consistently high in these happiness or well-being studies? We've talked about a couple of them here. So this article summed up five of her key points. So number one, a pro-social orientation. A lot of research suggests that Mormons are the most pro-social group in America. Active Mormons report that they volunteer an average of 35 and a half hours per month, including church callings but not missions. I did a whole video on that called Volunteerism. Uh, even if you take out religious volunteering, callings, and other church services, Mormons still volunteer as much as the national average. Also, Mormons donate more than twice as much of their income as the national average of people who give to charity and more than four times as much as national average overall. Excluding tithing, Mormons still contribute a large amount to charity, $2,000 a year. Um, I did a, a whole video on that, on tithing as well. Um, number two, focus on, fa on family. Mormonism has a large emphasis on family home evening, family prayer, family meals, and family ritual. A, re a review of 32 publications suggests that family rituals and routines are associated with childhood health, academic achievement, and improved marital satisfaction. Also, one surprising finding is that a study at Emory University showed that knowledge of family history greatly predicted a child's psychological health. Researchers found higher self-esteem, lower anxiety, and lower behavior problems in kids that know their family stories. This could be because they develop a sense of identity that's larger than just themselves. They're embedded in a larger intergenerational context, knowing that your great-grandma was able to Cross the plains after your husband died could give you a greater amount of grit and self-determination. <laughs> I know personally it has for me. Uh, number three, purpose and meaning. There is a substantial relationship between an individual having purpose and meaning in life and their well-being. Mormon doctrine offers its members an explanation for the purpose of life. The belief that life is a temporary learning experience to help God's children develop lasting joy may help Mormons help have positive emotion, character development, resilience, grit, and meaning. 
Okay, autonomy and agency, the motivation that drives behavior has significant impact on well-being. Behavior that, that is self-motivated results in more positive outcomes. Mormon doctrine holds that part of the purpose of life is to exercise agency and learn to choose between good and evil. Mormons are taught that compulsion is not God's way, and Mormon doctrine emphasizes agency, autonomy, and free will. And last five, the physical health. There's a lot of research. Of course, on the negative consequences of smoking and drinking, the Word of Wisdom includes a range of healthy behaviors and also supports the general ideal that there's a deep connection between our bodies and our minds. Positive psychology research show, calls that the body and mind are so inseparably connected that it's misleading to regard them as two separate entities. What, with what positive psychology is saying about health is not that different from what Mormons hear in church about the, their body being a temple. This emphasis on health may explain in part why Mormons have lower risk for cardiovascular disease and live on average five to ten years longer than other people. Periodic fasting actually plays a part too, even controlling for the facts that Mormons don't drink or smoke. Research. Researchers attribute this lower disease to rate to periodic fasting, uh, which is all the rave today, right? Um, and I actually did the study or uh, Word of Wisdom video too um, on on uh, that too, uh, re recent studies on that uh, from a health perspective. Okay, now there is a phenomenal uh, study that was done, just very very detailed for youth, and I, I've actually got the ebook for it. Uh, it's called Soul Searching. This was done 2002-2003. Um, the Religious and Spiritual Lives of American T Teenagers. Really fascinating. So I want to show you some, some great slides uh, from that study. Now, um, this here, there's a code for what these letters mean uh, on there. So um, the, the U.S. is the national average, and then religious traditions. You have CP is, is uh, conservative Protestant, MP is mainline Protestant, BP is black, uh, Protestant, RC is Roman Catholic, J is Jewish, LDS, you know who that is, and then non-religious uh, at the end there. So if you look here, this first slide, um, religious life and families, and I'll just highlight, a, a lot. so this survey is, it was called the National Survey of Youth and Religion. Um, and uh, there, like I said, a whole book on this. So I'm just showing you a couple of key slides. So this one here, look at this. Family talks about God, the scriptures, prayer, or other religious or spiritual things together every day. Look at the Latter-day Saint teen, 50%. Look at everybody else. I mean, this is just blows everyone away on the statistics here. Look at the one down below. Teens pray out loud or silently with uh, one or both parents, other than other than at meal times or religious services, seventy nine percent. Again, very high uh, as number one. Okay, next one here. Currently involved in a religious youth group, seventy two percent. You can just see the other numbers across the board there. Youth group and participation rate, seventy five percent. This is interesting. Congregation has a designated youth minister that's a volunteer. Look at that, eighty five percent. Most have that as a paid position kind of thing. As you know, we have callings in the church that are not paid. And that's how, how it runs. Um, how about this? Youth group teen is involved um, with, is part of a teen's religious congregation, 66%. I, I was so surprised to see that being such a high number relative to others. I thought that's how it kind of was for everybody. All right, uh, frequency of current youth group attendance. More than once a week, Latter-day Saints, very high. Um, about once a week, still number one, even uh, that. Combine the two together, too. Uh, type of youth group involvement. Teen is a leader. Look at that. 36. Very, very high compared to anyone else. And then look at not involved. Uh, the youth group uh, not uh, being involved uh, in that perspective of the lowest by quite a bit. Okay, uh, a few more. Importance of religious faith shaping daily life. If you rate that as extremely important, Latter-day Saints, 43%. Uh, just blows away all the other numbers. The next one, importance of faith shaping major life decisions, 52%. Look at it, look at all the other numbers. Just just amazing differences. Okay, let's go to the next slide. Okay, this is the last one for now from this from this book. So, um, in the prior year, did your teen do one of these things? Uh, teach a Sunday school class or religious education class? 42%. Top score for Latter-day Saints by a long shot. Fasted or, de or denied themselves something as a spiritual discipline. Number one by a long shot, Latter-day Saints. Been part of any other scripture study or prayer group. 50 uh, uh, on top there. Um, sang in a religious group. Uh, we weren't, the, the uh, black Protestants, 52, barely beat, beat the Latter-day Saints there. Um, read a devotional uh, or spiritual book other than the scriptures. 
big, big number one there for Latter-day Saints. Spoke publicly about our uh, own faith in a religious service. Look at that. Uh, huge there. That's probably those giving youth talks. Um, tried to participate a week in a weekly day of rest on the Sabbath. 67%. Look at that. It's uh, uh, nearly uh, double most of uh, the others. Shared own religious faith with someone not of their faith, 72 highly above everyone. And then the last one on here to highlight is frequency of team praying al alone many times a day. That was the, the Latter-day Saint, Latter Saints on, on top. Okay, so then looking at how committed the Latter-day Saint youth uh, are, and then the family study, some of the things we mentioned. Um, this is an interesting article. LDS Living uh, published this in June of 2014. So if you look here, it says, In a recent study from the National Longitudinal Study of Youth, which represented about 14,000 American youth, it was discovered that religious youth with intact families are less likely to drink, do drugs, engage in physical intimacy. Additionally, this study pointed out that religious teens also have a higher GPA in high school, a separate study indicates that teens who practice religion will achieve a higher level of marital happiness and stability, develop greater educational aspirations, contribute more generously to their community, live longer and healthier lives, and display higher levels of self-control and self-esteem. Okay, now there's, I'm going to show you a few slides from a book. I had to actually literally take pictures with my phone <laughs> to show you these um, here. But just a few slides that are kind of interesting, specifically in the education area. But this was Shield of Faith. Um, uh, this is actually BYU Religious Study Center in conjunction with Desert Book that published this. Um, Brent Topp, Bruce Chadwick, and Richard McClendon. Um, the Power of Religion in the Lives of LDS Youth and Young Adults. Lots of internal studies, men versus women, different parts of the world. And different things internal, uh, but they do have a, a decent amount of other uh, aspects that where they're doing some national comparisons and things. And so I took a few that were kind of unique in a few different areas. So here, on education was one I wanted to, to show you specifically grades. So uh, first of all, grades in high school. Uh, look at just the top line there. Uh, uh, getting A's in high school. Uh, young men that are Latter Day Saints, uh, twenty five percent national sample nine. <laughs> uh, young women thirty three to to 14. So about two and a half times the national average um, there. Okay, how about post high school educational expectations? Uh, so this is what you're expecting uh, to do. Look at, I thought it was fascinating, graduate or professional school. 58% of young men, that's their expectation, is graduate or professional school versus the national sample of 15.7. So almost four times that. Um, young women for college, it was almost a 36.7 versus 60. Even graduate professional uh, lottery scenes were higher, 29 to, to 22 roughly. Okay, then educational attainment. Uh, now this is of uh, return missionaries. So... Um, this is the reality of actual attainment. So college, 40% versus the national average at 18. Now these are 35 to 44-year-olds on um, the measurement here. Uh, and then graduate school, 25% versus 8. So a triple uh, on there. Okay, now then taking that one step further, um, this last piece here, if you look at it, it's looking at, uh, first of all, employment. 98% uh, employed, 93% uh, U.S. Uh, Again, based on when this was done uh, a while back. Um, and then the women, 57 versus 77. And that's actually, again, these are return missionaries. And so that may be uh, illustrating also uh, some uh, choosing to stay home as mothers. Um, there, but uh, and then the bottom is is family income. So if you look there, the bottom two categories: fifty thousand to seventy-five thousand, thirty percent return missionary U.S. twenty-four, seventy-five thousand over is thirty-one versus twenty-eight. And then if you also think about this, there are a number of uh, the majority of the U.S. Uh, statistics today would be two income families. So if you actually adjust for that, these numbers would actually be quite a bit larger. And in fact, this is a book, The Triple Package, um, uh, How Three Unlikely Traits Explain the Rise and Fall of Cultural Groups in America. And they actually highlight the Latter-day Saints, um, uh, Cuban immigrants, and the Jews. Uh, are the three category three groups, uh, cultural groups as they call them, that uh, they highlight as being very successful above um, what they would be expected to be statistically, especially after adjusting for different things. But it, it is interesting that superiority and uh, insecurity and impulse control are the three uh, key categories, but they talk about impulse control. The, the mission is a big example 
uh, there. And in fact, an interesting um, article or an uh, uh, online blogger that's pretty famous in the church, Greg Trimble, uh, put together this piece back in 2015 with some statistics that were coming out about funding, venture capital funding in Utah that was off the charts, uh, number one that year. And so we put this article out. Uh, it's called Venture Capitalists Are Proving Just How Valuable a Mormon Mission Really Is. And I'll link to this. Uh, but look here, this underlying line, it talks about they, they, they receive an education that cannot be bought at Harvard, Stanford, or any other top institutions in the country. They learn how to think on their feet. They become masters at resolving concerns. They learn how to respond intelligently and, and analyze situations thoroughly and naturally. Then he just goes on and on about all the things you learn from a mission. Look at the second bullet point. Whether they know it or not, venture capitalists are proving just how valuable a Mormon mission really is by backing companies that employ massive amounts of these individuals. Now let's do the numbers. Did you realize that venture capitalist firms invested more money in Provo Orem Company startups per deal than any other place in the United States in 2014. <laughs> San Francisco came in second place and then Salt Lake occupied the third spot for the highest dollar amount per venture capital deal. Um, this means that the cities along the Wasatch Front occupy two of the top three spots that investors wanted to invest their money in 2014. And then just the other day, literally, this was January uh, 7th, 2020. This was in the Provo Daily Herald. A study shows LDS sister missionaries gain leadership skills used in workplace after missions. Uh, women who serve full-time missions of the church gain quality developmental tools that provide leadership skills in the workplace and other areas of life, according to a new study released Tuesday. The first of its kind study was released by Susan Matson, professor of organizational leadership at UVU Woodbury School of Business and founder of the Utah Woman uh, and Leadership Project. Matson said she expected no more than 200 responses to the survey, but was inundated with 687 responses, most of which were detailed. From the responses, a list of 38 co uh, competency categories uh, were created and ranked uh, by percentage of individual respondents who mentioned each. Here's the top five. Public speaking, conflict management, courage, interpersonal skills, and problem solving. Uh, Madsen said there is much more and mu uh, much deeper information that is yet to be compiled from this project that will be published later this year. And I remember, I'm going to give you a great example, Sharon Eubank. She spoke at the um, Fair Mormon Conference several years ago. It was called uh, this is a woman's church and it was the only time I remember a standing ovation that just like went on for minutes it seemed like it was just just phenomenal but at the beginning of her talk she talked about her mission to Finland she said she could have never even given this talk if she hadn't have gone on that mission um, uh, so anyway I, I, but it was one of the best talks I think I've ever heard in my life um, and I thought it was Stunning that she actually admitted that there she said she was really shy before her mission and she she couldn't have done that okay um now, this was an interesting piece that Vox did. Uh, this was just in, in March of 2019. Um, and they, they were focusing on why uh, Latter-day Saints, the membership of the church, was not plummeting like we're seeing in other Christian churches. Um, and so, again, looking at some, everyone keeps asking why, you know, why, why this, why that, uh, trying to point to different things. So here's what they had to say. So here's some bullet points. Today, white evangelical Protestants account for 15% of the adult population, down from nearly a quarter a decade ago. That's like a 40% drop. Uh, by contrast, Mormons have held steady at roughly 2%. The last several years, the South Southern Baptist Convention, the heart of the uh, conservative Protestantism, has sustained 12 straight years of membership losses. And since 07, they've actually shed 1.2 million members. The success of the Mormon Church may have to do with their unrelenting focus on the family. 81% of Mormons say being a good parent is one of their central life goals. Nearly 75% of have a good marriage is one of their most important priorities in life. Uh, there's no better illustration of this emphasis than Family Home Evening. The church introduced this officially sanctioned weekly event in 1915 with the goal of strengthening family ties and engaging children in religious and spiritual activities such as prayer, hymns, reading scripture. Sociologist Vern Bingston, author of Families and Faith, described family home evening as among the most successful religious programs fostering intergenerational connections. And then the next three bullet points, I'm going to show you the actual data that they took from Pew. So this first one here was uh, uh, likely to be married. So if you look there, 66% of Latter-day Saints married versus Christians overall, 52%. The next slide is um, a spouse within the faith. So 82% have spouses that they share the faith with. It's the highest of any of the, of the Christian denominations. Um, and then children, 34 
uh, children. Uh, so 40 to 59 year olds have 3.4 kids on average versus the average Christian uh, 2.2. Then they say to the final three points here. So those top three bullet points were the slides I just showed you. Then, then they say, Recent research has shown that when Americans are raised in households with parents of different religious backgrounds, they have weaker attachment to religion as adults and are more likely to disaffiliate. Divorce is also shown to hamper the transmission of religious values. Because the vast majority of Mormon children are raised in two-parent Mormon households, they are far more likely to receive robust and consistent religious instruction throughout their childhood. And the Pew Research uh, 2014 Religious Landscape Survey found that 64% of those raised in, in uh, Mormon households still identify as Mormons as adults, better than that of most other Christian denominations. Among the 350 families he studied, no religious group was more effective in passing on their religious identity and beliefs to their children than Mormons. Okay, then the church actually, uh, they put something on the church news um, to highlight a big study of teenagers that it was done by the University of North Carolina. And this was back in 2005. So again, these numbers maybe have changed since, since then. But like I said, if you were to compare them to everybody else, I'm sure the gaps would be bigger. But this was a huge study, uh, 45 different states. It looks like about 3,400 different teens. Um, there. And if you look at the what I've underlined there, researchers at the University of North Carolina and General Latter-day Saint youth included, included in the survey ranked number one when it came to the effect of religion on their lives. I'm not saying they're all perfect, said the studies leader, the sociologist, but when belief and social outcomes are measured, Mormon kids tend to be on top. And so, and so you can look at actually down below um, the statistics. If you want to pause, you can look at those. They're similar to some of the others that we've looked at, and a few I'm going to show you here in a minute as well. Okay, now I wanted to finish by showing um, a group of slides, about a half dozen from that soul searching book um, that we talked about um, earlier. And this is fascinating when you look at. Um, the data here, they, I wanted to highlight specifically the devoted uh, youth. So this is 8% of America, but here's how they, how they categorize this. So look at this. Attends religious services weekly or more. Faith is a very or extremely important in everyday life. Feels very or extremely close to God. Currently involved in a religious youth group. Prays a few times a week or more. Reads scriptures once or twice a month or more. So if you, if you have an active Latter-day Saint youth, they are in that category pretty likely. You've seen the statistics we went through earlier. So with that in mind, now look at these slides, and I want you just to take it in in a couple of different aspects. So just look at this first slide, and then you'll see as, as the flow goes here, is if you look at the devoted column, those numbers, the percent to an answer that, and then you can compare to the U.S. on the left, but I kind of like just looking at the disengaged, the sporadics, and the regulars compared to the devoted uh, there. So this, like if you look, it personally cares about the poor. 69% of Latter-day Saints, uh, well, I'm saying Latter-day Saints, but of the devoted uh, care about the poor compared to the disengaged 33%. So if you if you kind of look at it from that perspective and the trend towards that, it shows the power of religion on some of these things and then also devoted uh, versus the national and to the left. So per personally cares about the elderly is the next one, much higher. Personally cares about equality, again, much higher. Um, the next slide... Um, average number of regularly organized activities, uh, clubs, classes, or organizations they're involved in, uh, 3.1 is double that of the disengaged, uh, has given money, uh, triple that of the disengaged, uh, volunteer work, uh, double that of the disengaged, uh, number of times work, uh, uh, volunteer work um, per month, um, is double the disengaged. Um, Next slide, uh, believes that morals are relative, no definite rights or wrongs. Uh, only 22% said, yeah, they are relative, compared to disengaged 61%. So interesting. Lied to parents, uh, never, uh, 26%. Uh, as you can see how that compares, cheated on a test, never, 45. Um, did things that hope their parents would never find out, never is 24. Okay, sexual belief and activity. Look at these top two. Believe in waiting for marriage to have sex, 95%. Disengaged, 24%. Even regulars are 57%, which is the national average. Believe it's, in the second one, believe it's okay for teens to have sex if they are emotionally ready for sex. 30% U.S., 3% for the devoted. And by the way, here's one slide from that Shield of Faith um, 
book that we talked about uh, here, this very specific to Latter-day Saints. Now, again, this is dated um, here, but I'm sure, like I said, the gaps would, would be probably even larger now uh, between non-Latter-day Saints. But young men, um, age 15 to 17, 8% uh, had, um, had, had, had had sexual intercourse. Women were 11%. But look at the national averages down there in the 40s, uh, roughly. And then 18, it was 11% for the men, 19% for the women. But again, compared to in the 60s, roughly, uh, for the national averages. So huge, huge differences uh, there from a, a moral perspective. So at the end of, the, at the end of this study... The huge study, uh, you know, whole book on it, like I said, it's called Soul Searching. They, they, this is what the uh, authors said. Standing back from all these tables and viewing them as a whole, we can draw some large summarizing conclusions. First, ironically, contrary to many youth's own inability to see or art articulate the influence or importance of religion in their lives, religion does in fact appear to be a significant factor that does make a considerable difference in a host of life outcomes. And these observable differences are not scattered and uneven, but emerge regularly across a wide variety of adolescent at attitudes, experiences, relationships, behaviors, and beliefs. The consistency across outcomes is truly striking. Moreover, as we have repeatedly noted, the religious differences across the outcomes are consistently statistically significant. I thought that was a very good way to uh, end the video. I hope you really enjoyed all those statistics. Subscribe for more. Thanks.